we should probably start. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Tink Time. We are your co-host, I am Big Tasty, this is Little Yum Yum, Jeez. and uh, today we're going to be talking about tubs, but... They're going to get us for that one day. <laughs> like, I feel like they're going to come after us for that. We're starting a little early because I want to tell a story. Oh boy. And it's not fish related, so we're starting five minutes early. <laughs> So I can I'm tell this lean story. Back for this one. Plus, we got to wait for people to roll in anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 why yeah. not tell a little story? Word. This happened uh, a couple days ago. Uh, I was uh, decided to take a little stroll outside at about two forty-five ish in the morning one night. Oh God! And I'm standing there, and out of the corner of my eye, I see like this white ball, <laughs> just kind of moving across perpendicular to me, right? In the, in the yard going across the pond and at first I thought it was like a plastic like grocery bag like floating through the air and then it, <laughs> and then it got r closer and I was like that's uh that's fur yeah. like this perfectly round ball of fur and it was like floating and not like I mean it was on the ground but like normally when like an animal runs like it does this it kind of hops There's or jumps jumping. skips this was like perfect like it was on a treadmill or something right like a one of the, the people movers at the airport and i was like what in the heck is this thing you know it's super dark out but this thing was like snow white it's the the whitest thing i've ever seen and uh oh boy for the longest time i couldn't figure out what it was and it, it was like so perfectly round i was like it's too big to he be a came rabbit back in here and was like i i so i slowly backed up because i didn't want to scare it we have these um pipes irrigation pipes like little six inch irrigation pipes stacked up next to the fence because we got to build a ditch so it doesn't flood it in our yard anymore and it ran over to those pipes and it hunkered down in those pipes like so you, you could barely even see it like it knew it was camouflage in these pipes yeah. so i backed up slowly once i got to the door i ran inside grabbed my flashlight that's what it was yeah and she's like, what are you I was like, doing? What the hell is happening right now? I'm like, there's something outside. And of course, I'm like, okay, then there's something outside. <laughs> like, I was like, sure thing. And so I go back out. I shine the light at it. It had ran, and the motion lights over here went off. So I ran over to the whole other side. There's a couple acres here. I ran to the other side. And then another motion light went off. So I ran over to that one. And then the our neighbors are, are over there, and they're back motion. So I'm like following it going this way. I never caught up to it. So I was like, racking my brain on what this thing I could said be. could it be a raccoon I did say that at one point I said could yep. it be a raccoon I said could it be a coyote I said could it be a cat I it said, definitely could it, be... it was like bigger than chance yeah it was like, I but just not was... as big as my mastiff right I was thinking it was about, really big we have a lot of wildlife so I was like what but then I couldn't think of anything that would be white you know what I mean like white like, what's white a rabbit but then he said it was bigger than way a too big to be a rabbit yeah. i'm going to show you what it was because I, I was i was trying it to is think a too. super duper rare animal mm -hmm. uh let me pull it i had it up on my phone but oh you know what? i'll just pull it up on uh, yeah yeah you should do that i'll pull it up over here it's very interesting looking too once you see it you're gonna be like huh it did it looked like yeti's baby yeah so at first i was just like calling bs and then when we figured out what it actually was i was like okay yeah that now i get it now it makes sense but it's like, it's, they're just crazy looking. Okay, I got it here. Pull it up for you. Yeah, chupacabra. Uh, chupacabra. Where is fire? Here we go. That is what it was. Okay, look at this thing. It is a leucistic raccoon. I've never heard of such a thing, but this is exactly what I saw. There's one here. I moved my cameras over to where it was and uh, I haven't caught it since it hasn't shown up since but this thing lives here and what's funny is the last couple years we've had a leucistic robin if you've never seen a leucistic wow. robin yeah Super they're cool. they're really cool too yeah um interesting that like I wonder I wonder if there's anything to that if there's multiple leucistic animals in an area like that just seems very odd like so very odd yeah the leucistic robin is is pretty rare, but it's nothing like a leucistic raccoon. These are supposedly incredible, ra incredibly rare. Um, so much so that I actually set up a live trap as well. Uh, caught some rats, but <laughs> no, no leucistic raccoon. Obviously, I wouldn't keep it or anything, but I just just to be able to document it because they're that rare. Um, it would be cool to catch one, document it, and let it go because I want to see this thing in my yard all the time. 
but uh yeah it was super crazy i've never seen one never heard of one and then it was literally like 20 feet in front of me and i couldn't even tell what it was because you know it's three in the morning it was dark but looks like a polar bear it does it looks like a little mini polar well, bear it's weird because one time when i was at a nature center fea nature center i used to go all the time in sacramento and i saw a melanistic squirrel so he was pitch black i'd never seen anything like it and i at first i just thought oh that's weird and then i like no that's too weird so I looked it up, and, and it actually was a melanistic, uh, like, I, it was exactly what I saw. And they're very rare. It was, like, one in 50,000 or, or one in, like, no, it was, like, one in 500,000, I think, is what it was, is melanistic. Yeah. those These are very cool, though, the robins. Yeah, and here's the robin. If you've never seen a leucistic they're robin. very cool. Uh, we, this guy was here for three summers, and uh, we haven't seen him yet this summer. Uh, they don't exactly have the longest lifespan, so that might be it. But I uh, would love to see this guy again. He definitely made an entrance every time. It was very, like, striking in contrast to a regular robin. And he'd hung out with all the regular robins. <laughs> so it says, I'm sure the raccoon was just as surprised to see a probably, Sasquatch. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, but I just think it's very bizarre. Like, what's next? The leucistic cougar? We have, we have mountain lions here, so that would be kind of interesting. I don't know. It is a definitely. leucistic bear. I mean, that's, yeah, know, I'm sure it exists. We have bears here too. So, yep. anyways, that's my non fish story. That's why I wanted to start early. I was just, it was very, it was wild. Surprising. I didn't like, it. this I happens know. to me in the mountains where you see something where you're like, what in the world is that? And you chase after it. But never in my own yard would I ever expect to see something like this. So it was pretty cool. I made, it made me, uh, made my day, made my week, actually. I was very much in doubt until we figured out what it was. I didn't shut up for like four days about it. It was, it was so I mean, cool. it's, it, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. There's a leucistic cardinal in my area. I haven't seen him, but have seen pictures. That's cool. Yeah, there's like a lot of reptiles that I think are very cool. I don't like albino, but I think leucistic animals are very cool looking. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of albino. Mm -hmm. Just the red eyes really yeah, creates it. I don't like that look. The, the, I could do without. Yeah. So the leucistic, those dark eyes are what it's so mm -hmm. striking. It's like you could look right in their souls. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. It's just all pigment. It's very, and then the lack of pigment. But anyways, there's my story. We're here to talk about fish, so we will move on. I don't know. If anyone else has ever seen one, I'd be curious because yeah. I've never even heard of one. So that was pretty neat. But uh, we're going to be talking about ponds. I set up my first outdoor tub this weekend. I'm super excited, even though it's still in the 30s here. It's a little chilly at night still. Still probably at least a month away. And I know last week we had the poll where it was a pistos or shell dwellers, and I went with neither. Went rogue. Um, that being said, there's still... So I have the two gigantic tubs. I have two tubs that are six feet by four feet by two feet deep, um, which was... I don't know, kind of a joke to me when I did the pull because I was like, I got two tubs, I could do both anyways. But, you know, pulls are good for... Uh, <laughs> Which one first? Like... Pulls are good for interaction, so... Yeah. So annoying. Uh, so what we went with, I will, I will show you, and then we'll have Chelsea talk about it because she's an expert on these fish. <laughs> And um, Uncle Smiley's Aquariums, that might be my new favorite Ew. name. And I love the avatar. Welcome to yeah, the Dream good. Team. Zen Ginger says, in case you missed the fun lively member stream before, we do this at we do it at 3:30 p.m. PST every week before this stream. We have a little a little get together with the members, and we rarely talk fish, but it is <laughs> we talk about things. It's so. everything's uncensored and off the cuff, if you will. So it's a little less kid friendly, but raw still still not worse than anything your kids are watching on YouTube right now. So there you go. So we went with some cool water fish because we don't have a very long summer here. That was part of the reason why we did this. Um, so let's just get right into it. And yeah. thank you so much again for becoming a member. We appreciate it. And here we go. The Argentine Humphead Earth Eater. We've, these fish are coming this week, by the way, from, I'll lower this down, this a note, from Dan's Fish. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, I mean, I paid for him, but still thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having great fish. <laughs> Um, so the Gymno Geophagus Balzanii, tell us about this fish. I, I really enjoyed mine. So I kept seven of them. Um, I had five females and two males. It was kind of frustrating because I had really wanted to try and spawn them. And I bought at first two females from a local fish store. 
they turned out to be females. They were so little. I was like, oh, please be males. Then I bought two more or three more and they were all females. And so finally I had to send away for some sub adult males. But as you can see, so the males have that crazy looking nuchal hump. And that's a, that's definitely a sub adult. That's a male just starting to get his nuchal hump. Their humps get huge. Their colors get absolutely beautiful. They have the red and the gold and the green and blue spangling all over them. They have beautiful extensions on their fins. They're just really striking fish. The females are not so striking. Uh, they will get some spangling, a lot less color, no nuchal hump, nothing crazy to speak about. They're very peaceful. Uh, the males will spar. So I had, like I said, two males and I kept those seven in a 75 and they were fine. The males would kind of just butt heads. That, that's all they ever did. There was no damage. There was nothing that I was ever worried about. But the cool thing about these fish is they come from Paraguay and Uruguay, and it gets very cold for a significant period of time in both of those places. And so a lot of gymnogeos can take temp drops. The Balzanii specifically can get down to like low 50s. They can be found in very southern regions yes. where it gets colder. Very, very cold. So, I mean, it, I've even heard of it dipping into like the 40s, and they're all right. I wouldn't necessarily want to keep them at that for too long but the point is is they can take it and not only can they take it they, they need it they need it they to thrive and do do you want to keep these fish as close as you can to how they're naturally living this is how they have to have a temp drop usually from four to six months out of the year so you're looking like half a year where you can keep these guys if you have if you live in a place where it's not going to dip much below the 50s for a significant period of time they have absolutely no problem with that and i'm really excited about these in a tub yeah that's that's a good that's a good example. Um, the tub's going to be nice mm. because you're going to be able to see them. And I think that's why we ended up going with these, in addition to the whole temp thing, the size. It's going to be really nice in an outdoor tub. It can be very difficult to see small fish. But with these guys, they get about, females will get about four and a half inches. The males will get about five and a half, maybe six. I don't think I've ever seen a male much over six inches. Mine were both around five and a half. And I, all. I just can't wait. They're, they're very enjoyable fish to have. They're earth eaters, so... They're going to need a sift. That's part of the reason why the sand's in there. Like, they need something to go through. They do not take large meals well. They need to sift and eat all day long. So when you have any type of geophagus or gymnogeophagus, you have to be very cognizant of what they're eating because they can become underweight very quickly. So, like, we feed ours bloodworms and, you know, uh, lots of bug bites and things like that. Or satana perga because they're the same way. That's what I've always fed. Any kind of geophagus or any kind of earth eater is lots of sinking pellets, high quality sinking pellets and different types of frozen and live food, probably three to five times a day. Uh, they need to eat frequently. This is like the opposite of what you normally want to do with most fish where people tend to overfeed. As long as you're not dumping mass quantities each time you feed these guys, you really can't overfeed them. Just give them little little meals throughout the day and they'll do really well. But they're great fish. Oh, they're, and you don't gosh. see them. For me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to interrupt you real quick because Danikin Aquatic says, are you going to have nets over the tub? So I've thought about this a few yeah. times. Um, as of now, I don't plan on it. Um, yeah, can you go get them? Yeah. As of now, I don't plan on it, but it is something in the back of my mind. And it's not for the raccoons. It's not for any of the predators except for dragonflies. So I have had absolutely terrible luck spawning fish outside and i think all my eggs are getting eaten um by dragonflies and dragonfly nymphs um we're working on that noise currently um uh, so that's that's the only reason i'm thinking of covering it uh but i'm hoping maybe these gymnos will be large enough to just eat them I mean, not off the start, not out, not, you know, like obviously they're an inch and a half. So not right now, uh, but it's pretty funny that a fish that looks like this, just a silver fish is so going to end up looking like this. <laughs> yeah, they look ridiculously boring when you get them. And I have to prepare people for that. As someone with a big forehead, I love fish with big foreheads. <laughs> so I wish mine was transparent like theirs, but you know. I know people have we a lot We all got of, flaws here. They have a lot, a lot of strong feelings on the nuchal hump. I think people either love them or hate them. But I think with this fish, because they're they're very deep bodied. So I should mention that, that be, just because they don't get very large, they are deep bodied. You want to keep that in mind. I'd say no less than a 75 gallon for these guys. Like they need space. Jesus. All right. Next up, tank mates for the Balzani. 
Ah. Black paradise fish. So, and uh, yeah, tell me, because this is not, uh, this doesn't look like a black fish. That looks, yeah. So, it's a little darker, but. Those are no, very no. young specimens right there. Um, I love paradise fish. I don't know, maybe I'm old school. Like, call me crazy, but I've always really enjoyed, I've kept a good amount of paradise fish. They are, I think they get a bad rap because a lot of, like, it's just like Jack Dempsey's and Oscars. These are old school fish and a lot of old school fish keepers kept this is what a lot of people back in the day this was their first fish you really don't need a heater with these guys they can do cold water very well like pretty much forever you don't want them to be freezing but they can definitely handle like mid 60s up to like you know normal like mid 70s high 70s i've kept them at all varying degrees within that range and they've done really well um i've never kept the black paradise fish and i think that when they get older they're absolutely stunning. Like they just look, I don't know. It, we'll have to pull up a different picture in a minute because these are, it's definitely not doing them justice. Uh, they get that really pretty like red eye. They just, they're, they're like a wild betta on steroids. They're, you know, they're a garami. So they are, uh, they're bubble nesters and they're very like, they move very similarly. The bettas like mine reminded me a lot of a betta, but cooler and prettier. They will have attitude to a degree. I mean, mine kind of just liked his little corner up top. And if anybody got in that corner, he'd make sure they left quickly. But he never did anything crazy. And I don't I wouldn't worry about it. I kept him with um, like my Empire Gudgeons and some other random things. And he did really well in that tank. But I'm excited to keep these outside because I think that it'll really they'll thrive. Um, th they come from very similar environments like this pond is going to be very very much like what they're from. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's like, we need a better picture because it's really, I'm a fan of the understated color in fish. And I think that this is exactly what that is. You can see all those hits of color, but they've got that that's really nice dark picture. base. Yeah, that's not the best. I mean, still, there you go. Mm -hmm. That's what they look like. Very pretty. So you can see it's like the base is a lot similar to a basic paradise fish, but it's got like that it's a little bit darker everywhere. I just, I really like these type of variants. I like the dark body on fish. Might be a little bit harder to see, but I'm thinking with the light sand substrate, we won't have that big of an issue. And they're gonna stay up top. The Balzani are gonna stay at the bottom. So I'm, I'm not concerned about that either. They should be just fine. And then what I haven't decided on is a Pleco. I really want bushy nose Plecos out there. Um, I haven't, I know I'm not gonna get albino and I'm not gonna do the regular chocolate. Uh, I don't I haven't decided. I have some L59s that I might throw out there, which is a, a rarer ancestress. So I don't know if I want to throw them out there. I'm kind of a little hesitant, but they are full grown adults. So at least there's that. If I was to go buy some super reds or greens, you know, I'd have to grow them out first. So kind of kind of undecided on that. Uh, I like that. It's like a betta. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very similar to keeping a betta. Um, I mean, this is this is a ten dollar fish. Yeah. That's crazy. This to is me. why it's I think beautiful. that we we really like fish like this that used to be popular back in the day. Let's remember, spotted Congo puffers were also five dollars and everywhere back at the same time when people were keeping paradise fish everywhere. I mean, this like I said, this is a lot of people who started keeping fish like in the sixties and seventies. This was their their first fish because this is really what was available. So I think that they kind of get discounted over time because people get bored with them. They're oh. inexpensive and. This is coming from me, who typically the fish that I gravitate towards are rare and more expensive. But then I also absolutely adore fish like this, where I think, like I said, they get overlooked because they've just been around forever and they're nothing that people don't think they're anything special until you actually keep one. And I should mention also that when you see paradise fish at like Petco or PetSmart, they generally look terrible. They're mass, you know, bred and just shipped horribly and the husbandry is awful. So... I don't think it represents the species very well. I think that seeing like Dan's paradise fish or the paradise fish at the wet spot, it's really nice because you see why people, why this was so many people's first fish. Makes a lot of sense. You just say the wet spot is paradise? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's what I said. All right. Yeah, we took it there. <laughs> that's right. That just happened. All right. So that's what's going in our one and only tub that's set up. We still have uh, a tub set up from last year that has a hodgepodge of rice fish it's better Jason. Um, they were sold to us as blue sparkle madakas but they are just a random mix of everything which is are. the problem when you get from sellers that are not the best mm -hmm. 
They did not come from the wet spot or Dan's, and now we're paying the price. But they were also like a dollar, so I can't complain. They're very cheap. Like, and they're still alive. So. Yep. And again, no babies. So my gold white clouds have been outside for about five years. Uh, never got any fry from them. Um, so I think there's definitely something in the water eating the eggs. Yeah, Sid said we used to get paradise fish and at my chain store, and they would look so well. They look terrible. I, like every time I'm in any chain store, I always see paradise fish because I always look because I love them, and they look awful. And I'm like, no wonder nobody wants these fish. It's very unfortunate. But the great thing is, is you can go to the wet spot or you can go to Dan's Fish, and you can get them for the same price, and they look beautiful. And you'll see, like I said, you'll see why so many people kept them for so long. They're, and there's diff- a lot of different variants of paradise fish. So there's, I feel like there's a paradise fish for everybody. And I just so happen to really love the black ones. They're, I think they're very pretty. So I like, let's take a look. Let's go back because Dan has a few of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like these guys. Yeah. Those and are these just, are only eight ninety. dollars I know. Like, those are just basic that paradise fish, fish. That's what I had prior. They're beautiful. They're, now, did you mention, sorry, I stepped away, mm-hmm. um, that they can get a little uh, angry yes, with I each did. other? Yes, I did. So okay, I good. did say that mine in particular, what I observed, and I've, I've known them to be, everyone says they can be a bit aggressive, and mine specifically, he had a little area up top because he kind of liked to stay up higher, and if anybody came into his area, he very quickly told them to get out, but he never hurt anybody. I mean, it was never... He didn't go the way that male bettas like Splendens can fight. And I think that people think like that. It's not fighting like that. It's basically like they are going to defend their space. And that's about it. So they like to have their bubble. And that's re- the that's better cool. beta. <laughs> yeah. Beta. Beta. I don't know. And I and I shouldn't act like I, I, I love wild bettas. And I feel like the Grammy, it, they remind me a lot of wild bettas, the paradise fish are very similar very and come from very similar areas in nature and geographically you know what i'd really love to do outside is baddest yeah, I, I would never see, see them yeah. in a 300 gallon pond but, but that'd be cool I, I would know they were there or like, like leaf fish would be cool leaf fish are oh i wonder what this one looks like what is it oh those are very those are cool if it's what i'm thinking of i, I could be wrong. uh there we go that's not what i'm thinking of <laughs> never mind never mind it's not because there's a larger one. I mean, that's pretty dang cool. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah, I'm not. But there's, I think I was, I was thinking of something else. But yeah, I love leaf fish. They're so weird. They just sit there. Lots of licorice garami here, too. I'd be interested to keep I have outside. kept multiple types of licorice garami, and I would like to say that they are so enjoyable. If you have a 10 to 20 gallon tank, I would really look into them. They're very enjoyable to keep. Really cool. Underrated fish, again, and not super expensive. Can you keep paradise fish together? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You just need a. They need room. Space. Yeah, they yeah. need room. If you so have enough space, you can. Don't be putting them together in a tent. No, and I would try and get males and females. I would try and get a mix. But yeah, if you have like a seventy-five gallon, you want to throw a couple of paradise fish in. That's fine. They'll have plenty of space. To, like I said, they want their bubble. They want their territory. That's how they're similar to bettas. Also, they want their space. If they have their space, I feel like they don't have a problem. You think Kick says, hey, Bob, missed last week and driving now, but thanks again for the code. Thank you for using the code. I yes. appreciate it. Using the code We've is got key. links for the wet spot, for Dan's Fish, and Aquarium Co-op rolling in the chat. So if you're going to shop in one of those places, you can help us out by using those links, and it costs no additional money for you. So mm. Sid said he had to feed them the pink bug bite flakes. Those are great, the color-enhancing flakes. Mm-hmm. I love that. We just said we need to pick some more up. Um yeah, that's that's how I get all my fish healthy. That's how I've done it for years. Bug bites. That's why I say it so much. I've I've gotten fish on death's doorstep that like. You why just, would you get them there? I hate you so much <laughs> deeply in my body. I've gotten I've brought them back from the brink with bug bites. I just I think that's such a great food. It really works well for us. Like and for me for many years. I've loved them for years. Is fish ram link here? I feel like I haven't seen it. I don't think maybe maybe but I don't I have. Because I don't have a computer in front of me, I can't really see. Oh, and Curtis Schindler, thank you for the $1 oh, super Oh, yeah. Chat. I can't forget that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. New local Austin. What's up, buddy? I feel like I haven't seen you forever. Hope you're doing well. And uh, if you were here every week for the last six months, I apologize for not seeing you. <laughs> Jerk. I always feel bad saying that because I'm like, I haven't seen you forever. But what if they were I here every time? I was just here. Oh, lurking. Now I'm the jerk. Uh, Carson said, I just got a 55-gallon. Have any breeding ideas? Well... 
I mean, there's, I, I, yeah, for me, uh, electric blue Acara. <laughs> you have a 55 gallon, get yourself a few Scotty electric blue Acara. Scotty the fish freak actually didn't say uh, it's six feet by four feet by two feet, which comes out to about 360 gallons minus Word. about six inches down. So we're probably around 300 gallons. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried to take photos, but they just didn't turn out that well. Um, mainly because it looks a lot smaller <laughs> but uh, here I'll show you if I can get the camera to focus. focus. Yeah, that's not bad. It didn't take that long. Uh, no. uh. Oh, you gotta keep it close. So I've got a rock pile there, and the rock on the on the right actually comes out. If you can hear me, probably not. <laughs> it looks good, and there's a lot of open space for the Balzani. They need to be able to get to all the sand, so. Gotta so leave space for yeah, them. that's one of them, and. Uh, so there's the rock pile on the other side, which one of the rocks comes out. So if something falls in there, like a squirrel, they can get over to the rock and at least sit there until I get there to take them out. Uh, but they could probably jump out. I'm not sure. And then one of the six foot sides, like over here on this side, is all Malaysian driftwood. And then in one of the corners, there's a stack of, what's the other wood? Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Spiderwood. Spiderwood. So, and then a mix of different types of rocks. And of course, the sand that we use in our tanks, we dumped in there. Mm hmm and uh yeah got one more to set up so we're looking for some more cool water species yep. hopefully but, uh, species we can keep out longer like things that can tolerate it for a longer period of time did matt break fish fam link again oh i don't know but uh as far <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> as far as like me having problems spawning fish outside uh, last year, instead of like breaking down the tubs, we just moved the tubs inside. Mm -hmm. And so I did empty them all to about an inch of water. We dragged them inside. There was about four bronze quarries in that tub. Oh my God, they're huge. And then we took the, that tub down. We needed to move it out of the fish room, so we just tore it down. So when they were inside, we pulled out about 50 bronze quarries. So in the matter of just the two or three months that they were inside, there was like at least 50 of them. Um, and then we moved them into a tank and they immediately spawned again. Uh, so they, they, they were definitely spawning. They had to be. And, uh, they're just, something's out there eating the eggs. I don't know what it is. It's kind of frustrating. Planted high, is it high, high, what hillbilly? I can't see that. High hop, high. I don't even know what you're looking Planted at. Planted 20-gallon with five orange Venezuelan quarries, six pea puffers. Think I can get away with a small dither school, maybe dwarf resboras or danios or better off not. You can try it. Oh, hip-hop hillbilly. Is that what it says? Okay. Yeah. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm so blind. Our um, screen is really far. Uh, yeah, and I can't. So I yeah, I absolutely think you could do that. I kept. I actually kept kubatai rasbora with my pea puffers in a 20-gallon. So. We actually have right now orange Venezuelans with oh, pea puffers yeah. in a 20 long. <laughs> There's no dithers, but I would feel fine putting kubatai or something there's like that in there. There's about a billion cherry shrimp. Yeah, there's a billion cherry shrimp. So, yeah, absolutely. You could try that. Why I not? wouldn't do dwarf rainbows unless you're talking about pseudomagills. Oh, yeah, cause... not rainbows. I would try uh, – I would do like um, – I thought it said rasbora, <laughs> which I was like, yeah, you could do dwarf rasbora. Like, you could do like the kubatai or the neon greens or, or not – the neon thing. blues. I meant to say the neon blues. Or the That's neon reds. Had. I had the neon blues and I, l I thought they looked really pretty and they did s my pea puffers didn't even look at them like they weren't even it was a non-issue there was never a problem so yeah I think you could definitely do that what epistos are on the green screen there's no way to know because there's a delay so even if oh, it's yeah. showing me an episto it could be showing you a different one although in this video there are McMaster eye Hong's Loy, and maybe something Ooh. else I don't remember <gasps> Bob, I would say dragonfly or frogs are eating eggs. We really don't have an issue with frogs. The dragonfly larvae everywhere. But I the have, dragonfly larvae are I have everywhere. constantly. You know what? I, I got mad because I actually, we pulled milfoil, like the plant, out of a bunch of the tubs, and we had used it for some of the tanks. And I looked in one of the tanks where we had pluckos, and I saw nymphs in there. And I'm like, you little sons of bees. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. so mad. I'm like, they can just survive anywhere. I, God, and they will predate on things. They will eat a lot of stuff. They'll eat live fish. They'll eat all They eat fish all the time. They eat minnows a lot. That's how they get big. Pains in the rear. Have you ever been bit by a dragonfly? That hurts. <laughs> I've been bit many times because I never learned my lesson, and it hurts. 
Hmm, I'm getting caught up on all the chat. Anyways. I know. I'm trying to read. Since oh, Leaky's broken, Nancy right. B. and Tennessee, I am extremely confident Stephen P. 2003 Aquatics farted. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Didn't think that was going there, but uh, all right. <laughs> he went there. I am a fan of farting. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I am a fan of who's. I am a fan of farting. I said it. I'm a fan of that. It's good I stuff. I just said it. You asked who said it. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says I like the fish in the background. Yep. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. If we're talking about the gobies. These gobies love cherry shrimp. Oh yeah, they do. Who doesn't? I dumped about 50 cherry shrimp in their tank, and they were gone the next day. Luckily, we have 18 billion cherry shrimp, so it'll never be an issue. June bugs everywhere. The Porsche light hit last night. Oh, my God. June bugs are huge, right? They're the really big ones, I think. I love bugs, man, but those those things will fly right into the side of your face. We forgot to shock our above ground pool back in the day oh. and swam. Oh, I've never even heard of that. Oh, you have to. So my stepdad used to have to do that because they would let it like there was a couple years they didn't cover it and they let it go. And my stepdad had you have to shock it and stuff or my stepdad would just dive in and like clean it. Oh, my God. It was disgusting. But there's all kinds of dragonflies, all kinds of different. What do you like, just drop like a toaster in it or? Yeah, <laughs> like... that's how you do it. <laughs> That a, is, a hair curler or science. a hair dryer. That's how you shock a pool. You just <laughs> plug in a toaster, a couple of them, and you throw it in. The end. No, it's chemicals. You have to shock. You kill all the algae and all the crap in there. But then they learned their lesson and they covered it like they were supposed to. So, Yeah, dragonflies, uh, I have mixed feelings. I love they're bugs. They're everywhere. But here. they're just like... Uh, I'm still butthurt when they bit me all the time as a kid because I just wanted to be friends and they were like, I hate you, don't catch me. <laughs> so I'm still upset. We are supposed to get a gazillion cicadas this year. Ooh, cool. Mm. Those are cool. Those things are like... Yeah, they look wild. They're like... Their nymphs look wild. They look like dubia roaches in drag. Yeah. like gla- And like glass. They're like crazy looking. I'm, I just love praying. We were just talking about this. I love praying mantises. I grew up, my mom was a big time gardener and she always had beautiful gardens. And we had a litany of praying mantis and I was obsessed with them. They were my best friends. My mom's like, you want to have a friend over? I'm like, nope, playing with my praying mantises. <laughs> That's what I did. And I'm still to this day. Fish. Just love them. Tank barn says, I might actually do tubs this year. I always hated taking them down. It is the worst. That is That's what, I, yeah. not what I enjoy. That's the thing is, I think if you're going to keep a tub, you have, like I was saying in the previous stream, you have to be very cognizant of the fact that these fish at one point will need a place inside. Most fish cannot stay outside all winter, depending on where you live. I mean, if you're in Florida, I think it depends. But like most places, I'm from California. And even in Northern California, where we had, it was pretty easy to keep stuff outside. There was still a period of time when no, it would, nothing would survive out there in that Matt Gray is here I gotta interrupt you because Matt Gray is here and I haven't seen Matt Gray in like three years it's been a long time thanks for stopping in and hitting the like I appreciate it T-Shot what's up bud name the old of the pikes the pikes are Crenicicla Notophthalmus we got them from the wet spot um they are not in stock anywhere right now that I know of because the unfortunate thing about these pikes is they come around every now and then and then they're gone for a very seasonal. Yeah, they're very long periods of time before they're available again. Another similar, which I think I found these recently somewhere, Ragani, so Crenicicla Ragani. I've kept both and the Ragani looks so similar to the Notophthalmus and they're also very peaceful. They get about the same size. So if you could find Ragani, I would recommend those to anybody looking to keep the Notophthalmus as well because they're very similarly dispositioned and like I said, size looks very, very similar fish. So, and I, I can't forget, I can't forget, I can't remember where I saw them recently, but I think I saw them Leo somewhere. creating an order just like that. Thank you so much for using the link. That's a... I know he was on it. He made his decision. I know. Now you have to tell me what you got. I know. What I did you see. get? What that. did you get? I hate that we can't I hate see. This freaking. Ooh, careful. Okay, maybe it'll stay. Uh, we'll see. I like when people buy stuff with my link during the live stream. Yeah. I don't know. It just fun. makes me happy. Maybe it's that's fun. superficial. Maybe it's. No, it's not. It's fun because then you're know. like, then you can literally go, hey, what did you buy? Like we just did because that's fun. And I can say, thank you, Leo. Yes, that was very nice. That's better than a super chat. Although we welcome those too. 
But at least when you use my links, you we both get something out of it. Chelsea, would you mind writing that name in no, no, chat? That's fine. What name? Credisiclinonothalmus and Regani. I'll write them both. Oof. <clears throat> no problem. Notothal Notothalmus. It's like P H T H. Yeah, it's, it's like P H T H. Who puts those together? I like the, these people that name fish. It's fine. Tell when I discover my fish, I'm telling you, it's going to be species Bob. Perfect. Everyone Bob in the world I. will be it able to, to pronounce it. Has to have an it. I at the end. You know how it goes. No, no, I'm I'm not even putting no, the, no. the I I. No. It's going to be B O B I I. No. No. There we go. And it's technically the Reg and I. I always just like, I like Regani better. So everything is a name of someone or whatever and the I at the end. So that's how, that is how I pronounce things is I usually just read it like that. Like it's a name usually. So you add the I. You should play a little song and dance when someone orders. I used to do that for super chats, but then it was like. <laughs> dance for. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a stripper. I was about to say that sounds like a, like a profession that already exists. Hmm. Oh, he got he got the ocelot of golds. Uh, yellow face with the bluish body. That was a female. Uh, next time it comes around, I'll try to pay attention. What? It, who? What? Now? He's asking about the epistos oh. in the green or mm. in the yeah in the green screen. I got the lamprologus ocelotus. Well, which ones? The gold. Oh, okay. Oh, mm. gold. You, yeah, I see that. The ones I had. Oh, and you finally got your reticulated algae eaters. All right. I have a sweet video of mine. I could probably send you. They're really cool. After they get the colonies. No, they're not going to get the colony set up, Leo. You have to get the colony set up. Mm -hmm. They are not colony spawners. I will tell you this about them. They will eat their babies. So Competing males will eat their yeah. babies. The females yeah, that right. lay they'll, them they'll won't eat them. So it's but just, they will eat. The babies will get eaten if you're not very cognizant of what's going on. Like most Shelleys, they're very territorial. Mm -hmm. They're um, so funny. These are just... Uh, Ocelotus are just not colony spawners no. like the Similis or the Multis. You're not going to end up with hundreds like you would with them. But the thing is, is I just personally you would if you remove them. the eggs. Yeah, yeah. If you but, if you're on top of it, they're just really pretty. And I I personally love those little like angry outbursts that they have all the time. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching it. So Davo says I got my first African butterfly barb fry today without oh, even trying. Nice. I put pears in a breeding tank in a week or so. There they are. So That's much exciting. Fun. All right. Congratulations. Uh, I have an order from Dan's coming this week. So do I with your code and have a gift card to the West Bot that will be getting used probably soon with your code as well. That's awesome. Really appreciate it. I told them they could be tiny little hate machines. <laughs> yeah, they can. But they're they're so worth it. I love mine. I tried to keep mine with Brashardé and it didn't work. So Leo, if you're wanting to actually spawn them and raise up the fry, I would again I would advise against using shells mm -hmm. and get 90 degree PVC Tubes. fittings. Yeah. Cap one end so that when they lay the egg you So when they lay in eggs and they spawn in eggs, obviously all the fry are going to in eggs in shells. <laughs> Um, it can be hard to get them out of there, so usually you have to take the whole shell out, right? And put it in like a breeder box or something. Uh, but if you use the 90 degree PVC pipes with one end capped, you just take that out, take the cap off, dump them in the breeder box, and then grow out the fry. It's that simple. It's uh, you don't need live food with them, in my experience. When I had them, I didn't have to give them live food, but like um, uh, small. What is the food I'm thinking of? Pearl, golden pearls. Oh, definitely. I would pick up some golden pearls on eBay or wherever. Oh, Jenna said, yeah, the mention of the barbs is my second bingo for today. Congratulations. I think it was, oh, it was the Borelii. Okay. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was the Borelii too. Cause I know the McMaster eye Borelii and there might be cockatoides in this B roll. I'm not sure. Craig said he just set up 110 stock gallon stock tank with a 40 gallon on top with a Timu filter running into the 40. The 40 overflows to the 110 stocked it with pumpkin seed sunfish. I think pumpkin seed sunfish are super cool. I like those a lot. So they won't grow with the parents. They would get eaten. Yes, they will yeah. get eaten by competing males. So the males are always going to spar. Like even Similis and Multis, like they set up their territories and the males spar, but they generally don't eat the babies. So you can colony spawn them, and that's how people end up with a billion of them. Uh, but again, you cannot do that with Ocelotus. Um, so no, they will not grow with the parents. Once they're of size, you can put them back in with the parents. Yeah. 
but as you know i would once they're like a half inch you can probably throw them back in there uh i would probably wait till like they're like three quarter inch though just to be safe yeah uh and then you can so the goal is to get like multiple little groups spawning in like your 40 or whatever size tank you're putting them uh but you do have to be diligent because you have like one day if they spawn and you don't get them out that first day they're going to be dead you could make a pretty penny on those things though they're not cheap no nope, um, as he knows because he just yeah, bought some yeah i paid 25 bucks a piece for mine and I, it was i got like six i think to start out with um so hip-hop hillbilly when you redo your 40 gallon breeder uh your tournament between multi multis or geo tapahos uh could they be put together i would not put those together um and honestly i would go with the multis because the geophagus even though the tapahos are smaller than most other geos they need at least a 75 um even just like i had a pair i had a male and a female that they spawned several times nothing ever came of it but then they were a bonded pair but they needed a 70 they were in a 75 they needed that much space because they move a lot so i'd go with the multis that's perfect for multis brian says hey b and c if you twos only had one 125 to share no other tanks what fish plants gave i it would be a west african yeah, it would have I, to be. I mean, it would I'm have to be. going out on a limb by yeah, speaking for the both of us, but that would probably have I'm to be. pretty sure it'd be West African. Uh, there'd be, I would want Nanochromis. Um, I would want Congo some. Buffers it or... wouldn't be true West African because I definitely would want Cynodontis. barbs. Oh. Like the fire barbs or the J barbs that you we could, got. Those are both West African. I thought they were more no. southern. J barbs are West African. Oh, well, so there you are go. The fire barbs are both West African. Boom, West African. Yeah. For some reason, I thought they were more from the nope. s- from southern. They are West African mm. fish, so you could very much put those. That I'm fine with that. I would like some petrocola. Uh, even though technically, uh, but I'd put those in there. Um, just because I feel like they work it's really still well. An African fish, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would do the spotted Congo puffers. I would want. Like more myrids of some type, uh, definitely <laughs> the uh, what's it called the um, Dystocotus. Like yeah, I could think of all the a lot of things we already have. It would have. be West African. Yeah, it would just because it's so it's not done. It's I, all I, the tetras. I could say like the one twenty five we have right now with all the South Americans. I love that tank, but you just see so much of that South American. I mean, South America's done all the time, and you just don't see as much West African. So that's why I love them. So yeah. And that, I think we'd agree on a lot of stuff for that tank when it comes to West Africa. You know what I mean? Like, that would be easy to to get, to pick fish out. Col- colored up panda melon barbs are amazing. Yep. Absolutely. I used to keep those a long, long time ago. Southwestern region, maybe? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> there we go. Perhaps. We'll compromise. <laughs> Sure. I was actually thinking they were from a lot farther south. No, so yeah, they're. I, I think I, I really feel like most people think a lot of barbs don't even come from Africa. Like, I like that's a. Well, I'm. I know there's a lot of like barbs and loaches that come from southern. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people associate that kind of stuff with Thailand and Asia. Lawrence Kent has a great Westie tank. Mm-hmm. That's someone who yeah. I wish I had an in with to be like. Yeah. I want to come do a fish room tour. Yes, yes, yes. Because he actually goes and collects mm-hmm. all these fish. He doesn't just buy them online. Which, which is even more impressive. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with buying them online, obviously. That's but. why I like Oliver. I always come back to Below Water because I really love that he goes there. He gets them in their environment. He brings them back. He actually sells that. Like, they're, the whole chain is right there in front of you. You see it all. And I love that. He had a really good new video the other day that I liked a lot cool fish what would be a good centerpiece fish to go with multis heard rocks i would go with cyprochromis mm. mm-hmm. that makes a lot more sense a school yeah. of cyprochromis that would be good for unless sure. your idea of a centerpiece fish is like one fish one big fish uh which then mm-hmm. i would have no option i would have no idea yeah for i couldn't really think of anything with the mul- like i feel like you'd be better off with what he was saying that would be a good mix of fish to have um another thing i like doing is rock dwellers whether they're julita chromis or uh altos uh, and have like a rock pile coming down into like a sand bed of shells. I always enjoy that. But having Cyprochromis in the upper water column is always fun. Craig said, going to plant it with spider grass, elephant ears, lotus bulbs, giant water lettuce. Any other suggestions? That's a good, that's a, I feel like that's a good amount of plants going on in there. I love giant water lettuce. Big fan. Big fan of that stuff. 
does good to filter light so you don't get crazy amounts of algae. Would panda corridors, corridors, panda <laughs> corridors. garas maybe eat platy oh. fry? Probably not. Corridors. <laughs> if it, I mean, there it's could they? Yes. Yeah, they could. Would they? I feel like they're not going to hunt down fry. If they're well fed, why would you know what I mean? Like if you're feeding them well, I don't think they'd seek out. They're not necessarily a predatory yeah, fish. Yeah, exactly. They, they're opportunistic. If one was to go by and they're hungry, would they eat it? Yeah. <laughs> why wouldn't they? Uh, I have a red tail shark that's about five years old. His front fins are turning red. Is that a normal thing? Uh, I've never had one with run red front. I honestly, I don't know. I've mm. never. I yeah, I could not. I haven't kept a red tail that. since I was like fifteen. I don't think I've. No, that's a lie. I did have a red tail one time when I was way younger. Yeah, when I was younger, I had to have one of every shark. I think, yeah, I think I was. I had an eel that I, I had no business having the tire track eel, but I had one, <laughs> and I loved it. But they said it was okay at Capital Aquarium back in 1995 or four yeah, or three. I got mine from Pet Puri in the 90s. Pet Puri. And they were like, had no problem selling me a ball of shark, a red tail oh, no. shark, a rainbow shark, the the black shark. I and, did my uh, I got a clown loach. Yep. And I put them, I was like, I put them all in a 29 gallon tank. And they were like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I had, I had a similar, not the same, but like I had a 20 long or a 20 tall. And I think I had angelfish, a tire track eel, mollies. What else did I have? I got a fiddler crab. <laughs> like the stupidest stuff in this tank. But at Capital Aquarium, I asked. They told me it was cool. <laughs> so fast and loose back there in those days. It's the Wild West. Yeah, anything could happen. And I had turquoise gravel. <laughs> oh, so bad. You know what I'd really like to do in an outdoor tub? The uh, glow light Danios. Mm, they would look nice. They would look nice. That I might actually have to do that. Yeah, that would look pretty. I don't know why I didn't think about that till just. And now. I think that much movement in an outdoor tub would be good. That's a good amount. Of, that's the, you'll see them. Or the rosy Danio would like be stupid goldfish where they just see you and run away forever. Um, uh, I'm looking for something here. Kenny says, out of, out of curiosity, how would a better fare in my 180 with the EBA? Maybe a short fin. Honestly, Probably if it's, if it's just there. EBA, I, I don't think they'd pay one bit of attention to that fish. I, it's, unless the better was bothered by them because they can be boisterous. You know, I'm sure you know this, keeping EBA, they can be a little, when, like when I would feed mine, the tank that had 10, they would breach the surface like they're jumping out they would jump into my hand they would bump into my hand because i they were hand raised fish so they didn't care about me but as long as you they had a place to retreat i feel like where they could like i don't think it would be a problem like aggression wise i just don't know if the betta would love that much activity That's you all. got garas from corridors <laughs> because i've seen my stupid iphone make some pretty yeah. hideous yeah. changes and lately Corridoras, right Lately, it's been oh panda corys. Corydoras, I think that's mm. that's what I said, but I don't know if you heard me. What did I say, Gara? You yeah, Gara. Corydoras makes way more sense. Yeah. But now my iPhone is like auto correcting to stuff that's not even words. Yeah, they, like, it does that. After it's a while. so aggravating. They get a mind of their own. Uh, de panda corys, no, I wouldn't be worried about them eating fries either. Uh, Craig, that's a good yeah. 110 gallon stock tanks on sale at Tractor Supply for 55 bucks. Not bad. Not a bad deal. So Matt says, did you guys get dwarf golden barbs? Yes. Yeah. The Pethia galeus. They're they beautiful. are absolutely amazing fish. So pretty. They're only $5. Here, They're I'll show ridiculous. you guys. I can't tell you how much I enjoy. We keep these with the fire barbs, and I can't tell you how much I enjoy them it together. It is such a cool combo. They the stay together barb, constantly. They're just barb, one giant barb. group that roves around the tank together. And there's some random, like, Latakara, a little Latakara in there. Everybody does fine. Where did I see the fire barbs? Yeah, that's a very good deal. Oh, cool, like Daniel. That's what I wanted right there. Uh, I know I saw them. They still have them, I think. Huh, Hip Hop Hillbilly. My most voracious oh, feeder is Harlequin Rasbora. They breach and swarm like piranhas. Yeah, I had Harlequins once. They're very zesty. So, yeah, these guys mm, paired. Love them. It's such a cool tank. Maybe, I'm probably going to do a video on just that tank. I really need I'm people waiting. to understand how red they get, so they get red. I'm, I'm waiting for the plants to grow in, and then we'll yeah. show these fish off the tank needs a little time but they the, uh we got some pearl weed from candy we're kind of waiting for it to get settled in a lot of pearl weed a lot of pearl it's weed. a it's a huge chunk of pearl weed hip hop anonymous yeah 
<laughs> I've heard that for so long. <laughs> oh my god. Hip hop anonymous. <laughs> Hip hop anonymous. <laughs> my most. Oh, you already got that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highly recommend these guys. Highly recommend the J barbs. There's so many. Yeah, the J barbs. We almost got cool barbs week. out there that I just think people don't know about. If you mm -hmm. want a really cool barb, these red tail barbs. Oh my god. Look so good. Yes, they do. I real those. Like are you need very a big tank. Cool. Yeah. Like you need a six foot tank for They're these guys, so cool, but though. they look. Uh, you wouldn't think like a silver fish with little red fins, but when there's like 12 so of them nice. swimming around, it looks really cool. Same with the giant Malabar Danios. Oh, like, yeah. Those these are, are. Oh, those are pretty. Yeah. I didn't even give you half of the chunk. <laughs> and I wish. It's giant. I wish that these were a little more inexpensive because these are absolutely beautiful, too. Yeah, those are really nice. They're very. Ex we all we have that price tag is just. There's there's some high festive break on I'm getting before I'm spending 20 bucks on a barb. Just saying. Oh, poor barbs. I know. Sorry, but that's just the truth. Sad day. I will have my Milana Stigos before I have those. I need to get someone to sponsor our tub so they can just send us like 100 glow light Danios. <laughs> sponsor. I, I really don't want to spend $500 oh. on Danios. There's a disturbance <laughs> in the force. I will, but I don't want to. No, that's a lot. <laughs> we have really hard water, too, so hopefully our pearl weed loves it also. Oh, God, my eyes are just... Not doing well today. I'm doing two tubs of guppies and shrimp and two tubs of rainbows, red laser, and Alan Iowa pogas. My other project is breeding a Tanganyika killies. That would be a good one, Ooh, Mike. Yeah, that's cool. Those are starting to get so expensive. Mm -hmm. It's. I remember when I could buy those for five dollars, and now they're twenty. It's starting to get like that. Well, that's what I was just saying about EBAs. They used to be eight ninety nine, seven ninety nine, and now they're the little ones are twenty bucks. And I'm like, whoa, when did that happen? They they. You can't stop those guys from spawning. Like, come on. Yeah, glow lights are beautiful. They really are. And I'm not the hugest Danio person, but I really think that glow lights are very, very pretty. Snakeskin <laughs> barbs are cool, too. I like those. A lot of barbs are very cool. I mean... I like twenty dollars barbs. I like. I mean, I like. Doesn't really matter the price. I, just, I love. I love expensive fish. It I matters when I can't secret. buy them because of the price, but I still love them. Yeah. What is he doing? I'm checking. I think Amazon might be here. But anyways, two blood parrots, two electric blue jack Dempsey's, one blue tiger parrot, one Salvinia, one albino Senegal biter. Salvini. 210 together. Is that a bad idea? Well, it's at um, least a big enough tank. I've seen people with more of those in like a 55-gallon tank. So at least, you're, I at think least you that, got the right tank. I think that you might have issues with the Salvini, but... You might not. It could go either way. But I think if you were going to have issues with any of those fish, it would be the Salvini or the Dempsey. But everything Oof. else, I don't think. Pay $35 for the Killies. Yeah, you got to spawn them and get your money Yowzer. back. <laughs> That's expensive. Mm. Uh, I have the spotted Kaithith Danios. I have two left. I think I started with around 12, like four or five years ago. And I've got two old timers left. And they are old. Planning on a few rice fish colonies, hoping to colony nice. breed. They will colony they breed. Will. Mm -hmm. You'll have a ton of rice. If as you long just, as you don't have dragon fine. Yeah, nymphs. don't let don't let stuff get in there that can predate upon them. But if you have safe keeping for them, then they'll have babies all day. Stephen P says, I want 70 of those blue neon gobies. Bet you do. I want 100 of everything. That's my thing. Yeah. She gets so annoyed. I want 100 of these. Every babies. time she's like, oh, this is a cool fish. I'm like, yeah, we should get like 100 of them. That would be cool. Mm. But that could be said about any fish, really. Uh -huh. Any fish. Uh -huh. But in case any of you wanted to emulate that and go buy 100 of anything, use our code. <laughs> well, you and it. show me. Like, yeah, and then tell it. us what you bought. That uh, is dozen, my favorite part. Uh, T-Shot says, I have a dozen glow light Danios, and they school with my four Roseline Sharks. Love them. They're, they're just like little trouts. They're so cool. Oh, yeah. The Salvini is what worries us. That That's logical. Um, that the first th I I'm not even worried about the Jack Dempsey's as much. The Salvini is probably going to cause some problems. So... That looks like a stocking right out of our big dumb cichlid yeah, video. Yeah, it does. I like that though. I mean, I, that tank could technically work. Like honestly, like you said, it's a nice big tank. You just the Salvini is gonna wreak havoc probably. And I hate to like box every fish in because I've had fish that everyone's like, oh, you're gonna have trouble. It's gonna be so aggressive, and I had no trouble at all. And then I've had fish that everybody was like, oh, they're so sweet. And I'm like, oh, why did they try and kill everything in my tank? Then it really comes down to that individual fish. I think you could try it, but I would watch it like a hawk. And if you saw one issue, I would be like, that's enough. No, just take them out. Or just 
leave the Salvini out. They're cool fish, you know. I like a lot of larger cichlids and more aggro, but I just wouldn't keep them because I like peace more than I like that kind of stuff. So, peace. I like peace <laughs> in my tanks. A hundred spotted conga puffers seems like a reasonable amount of money to yes, spend. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Although, if you had a tank big enough for a hundred spotted conga puffers and you got them, respect. <laughs> you could do that in Corey's eight hundred gallon. Yes, you could, and it would be freaking cool. That's an idea. <laughs> like. He should do that. I mean, if he had another one, that's a that would be so freaking cool. Like well, he has a bigger one in the new store. Oh yeah, well, I think it's like twelve hundred gallons. Do I don't even know. Could do that. I saw it for a second once. <laughs> that's all I got. Uh, bu -bu -bu. I paid sixty dollars for a pair of Gardner Achilles from Dan's, and they are worth every penny. It's something to be said about quality, right? Mm -hmm. There really is. I'm a huge proponent of that. Which is why I'm happy to be affiliated with places that are also huge proponents of that. Mm -hmm. And I have been talking about, I haven't committed to anything yet, but we were talking about this the other day, of possibly going to Dan's meet and greet on 4th of July weekend. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have always had a travel moratorium on 4th of July because it's my favorite holiday. But it would be cheaper to pay for airfare and hotel than to buy fire fireworks are so stupidly when i was a kid and i could spend twenty dollars and get like a truckload it was fun but now i spend two thousand i never spent this much but you spend two thousand and you still don't even get a truckload we had like a huge block party every year because i lived on a court and we would everybody it was a hundred bucks like all the neighbors are just throwing like five ten bucks it was a hundred bucks you got the biggest package like you could get like everything the biggest the best of the best with honors hundred bucks hundred bucks yeah, right. You go try and buy anything with $100. They're going to be like, you here's your little sad freaking whatever those things are that burn everybody's legs. What are they called? Uh, <laughs> a 500-gram 500, 500 cake now here is between $100 and $150. So and I used to buy them for 15 bucks. So stupid. 1500 So I'm so over it. Mm. Fireworks are drones these days. Yeah. And they look cooler, too. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if I can't afford fireworks, I certainly can't afford 2,000 drones. No. Or the software to, <laughs> to, to coordinate all of them. <laughs> yeah, really. Have you ever thought about building a tank? Even if, yes. And I, I, it's something I think about probably weekly. Oh, a plywood tank. Yeah. Because yeah. we have a sailfin dragon mm -hmm. that's going to need a very nice paludarium. Mm -hmm. And if I only had to buy one pane of glass, I don't think it would be. It would be a lot better than four. And Six. I'd, I'd rather have acrylic, but. Cost wise, I'd probably stick with glass. I've even thought about cutting up my 300 gallon acrylic tank just for the front pane mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to build something. So, yeah, it's something I think about all the time. And then I always like, I, I look at these people that have built plywood tanks on, on YouTube. And sure enough, it's always like, oh, my tank is leaking or my, my yeah. plywood tank is leaking. And I'm just like, how is that even possible? Like, it doesn't even make sense to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, just fiberglass it. It's just never going to leak. But I don't know. I've never, I I don't know that I've ever seen anyone fiberglass the inside. They do like pond liner and all this other they weird stuff. They do pond stuff. liner. I feel like it's always, and I'm like, have I'm you ever like, met someone who has a pond? Because they all leak. All of them. Like any pond with liner leaks. My I'm mom had to replace it. It doesn't all make time. any sense to me. Like fiberglass it. It's so easy. It's yeah. strong. They make boats out of it for crying out loud. Your stupid 400 gallon plywood tank is going to be just fine. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just an idiot. I've never done it, so I try not to be too critical. But I've built boats, and I've done a lot of work with fiberglass, and I know how strong it is. So it just it's amazing to me that nobody uses fiberglass. My dad is a contractor, and he has been, like, he was always hot on my case to, like, let him build something for my reptiles because he was he, he's pretty much retired. Like, he does work for, like, old clients and stuff and just because he doesn't like not working. But I think he just wanted something to do because he was like, oh, I could do this and I could build this. And I'm like, he probably could. I can only imagine we should import my dad to come build something. Curtis says, I only sell snakes and sparklers. Up here, you can't even get the metal sparklers anymore. So you can't even build bombs anymore. It's You can't even build bombs anymore. What is, what is the world come to? stupid cheap sparklers now. You, I don't know. If anyone out there can get metal sparklers, like, I'd I like to know. I don't think you can make them anymore. I, I would love to get them. Um, I've seen oh, fiberglass really? and pond liner. Like I'm, it's obviously it makes sense with fiberglass. 
it's obviously going to work, but the issue is how long. I don't know. The pond liner, I would never trust it. Never. Oh, the smell of fiberglass in the morning. It is It is pretty rancid. Mm -hmm. It's not a good smell. But I'm very used to it. So I went from... I went from a career in car audio and building custom enclosures out of fiberglass to building boats and repairing boats with fiberglass. So I've got pretty extensive knowledge, and uh, I just don't think it would be a problem. So it is something I think about. It's something I would love to do. Uh, it's something I – like, if I get – if we get our own house, and I would love to build a permanent giant tank like that. But part of the reason I don't do it is because I don't want to move it. It's a lot of effort. To Especially when you get into custom. Yeah. It's if you're building like Yeah. You, uh, really we can get the thermite here. We can get thermite. Hmm. <laughs> Stories from tubbing experience. Why does it have to be a stupid four hundred gallon? <laughs> well It just seems like that's the size I see. It's always yeah. around three to five hundred gallons. Yeah. There's a couple true. of them out there that are like 16 feet long and thousands of gallons. Those are cool. Mm -hmm. My favorite, so I know uh, right now, well, right now, for the last like year in Sacramento, um, pool builders have been very backed up for some reason. <laughs> so a lot of my friends were trying to get pools done, and I, one of my friends was like, hey, we ended up, my neighbors went with this like crazy tank. I don't even know. It, it's a custom made tank with fiberglass panels and that really heavy industrial metal and like the grommets and stuff. And it was like, God, I think that I think she said it was like three grand or something. Like I was like, really? That's it? And I, and it's huge. Like people swim in it. And I thought, holy hell, w that could be a fish tank so easily. Like, and really, that's not that much money. Like three grand for. I don't know exactly how big it is. I'd have to ask her like what the dimensions were. But she said that a lot of people were going because they had to wait so long for the in ground pools. They just were buying these instead. Because you could fit, you know, all your kids in there just fine. And I thought, oh, my God, that's such an opportunity for a fish tank. I want one. And Craig says, is it bad that I have MTS so bad that I rent out the townhouse next to mine just so I can keep my fish tanks? No, I, that's a good idea. I just can't just, I mean, we rent a garage. so It's, it's a good idea. Like I just can't just buy paying that high interest rates on a new home. Yeah. No, it's, you, buying a home right now is, is not a good idea. <laughs> like, it's just not. You're going to end up upside down. Build yourself a cargo container tank. I've thought about that, yeah, too. That's, that's basically what I just described is what it is, what that is. If it wouldn't be such a pain to get a 40 foot shipping container on my property um, and also dig out that size of a hole, I would probably think about it. Go lay down, Arlo. I hear you whining <laughs> very gently. <sighs> The rabbits are out in full force and they yeah. torment the dogs. Which was so funny because earlier Braxton was just staring eye to eye with one of the rabbits and not making a sound. And I'm like, oh, now I want to be quiet. Like, all right. Bold rabbit, too. I'll say that. Curtis says, I meant they did them together, fiberglass and pond liner. Mm. I just, oh. like, if you're going to fiberglass, why waste the money I, on pond I liner? I kind of feel the same way. I'm but, in, I don't hey, know, maybe. if it you works, know, it works, it, right? Yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with overbuilding something. Ooh, Mountain Greenery said they're going to be doing orange Madaka in a 100-gallon stock pond for the second summer. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Orange are probably my favorite. Yeah, orange are very a good, good. A good high-quality quality orange. orange yeah. yeah, they look lovely. Curtis says, shipping container fish room. I was actually just told her we walked past. We were out walking somewhere, mm -hmm. and somebody had a 40-foot shipping container on their property. And I was like, I would love to do that and just have rows of 40 breeders on each side. Yeah, that would be super cool. That would be pretty awesome. We lucked out buying a home from a friend right before the COVID price hike. Oh. That's nice that you had some. See, if you know somebody and they're not going to gouge you and they're willing to let you, like, have that opportunity, that's amazing. Because I've known people whose own parents in California would sell their sold their kids their house at market value. Like, <laughs> I'm going, that's messed up. You know they paid like 50 grand for that. Those Dario's look awesome. I agree. And so do these bar cheek gobies, even though the footage is not that great. Oh, did you see T-Shot asked you about wasting disease? And I have my thoughts on it, but he's asking you. Uh, does wasting away disease spread from fish to fish? I've lost one rainbow shiner like every month and a half. They all look so good. And then all of a sudden one will start fading out and pass. So wasting away the disease, I... I think this is like a general term for multiple different mm -hmm. possible things that are going wrong more than it is an actual disease 
It's like when they diagnose you with MS, it's because they don't know what you have, so they just put this br blanket term on something. So, yes, um, I would say it is possible to go fish from fish, depending on what it is. Uh, but again, like fish getting old also looks like wasting disease. So if you have really old fish, maybe they're just getting old. Uh, it's really hard to say, but if that was happening to me, I would hit them with everything. Oh, Craig. Wow. Southern Missouri rent is reasonable. 950 for both. <laughs> Good old Missouri. Oh, my God. Okay. I, I'm off I to work. Can't. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Candy, for stopping by. Always appreciate Have having you here. Good night. Be off. Enjoy your night. Don't think about anything <laughs> from work. We have super hard water in Kentucky. I wish I could tub African cichlids. Well, it sounds like you can. You could. You just have to be cognizant of temperature or keep a like a heater or something. I mean, you could do that outside if you have power. I know that kind of defeats the whole outside tubbing thing, but it gives you the opportunity to, you know, see how they do outside. Like dropsy. Yeah, a lot of things contribute to that. Like waste, you know, I've noticed like with fish that waste, it's usually if you have the same batch of fish, obviously if you have the same batch, like they came from the same spawn and they are just predisposed to this. And they, so that's why they waste. If you, I've noticed that like when I'd add to schools, sometimes like with sp my pencil fish with Equus specifically, cause they'd waste all the time. That's a fish that wastes badly. And I would notice that when I would introduce like, I'd ha I had a huge group of them, but I'd introduce like five or six more. And sometimes that group I would notice specifically would just waste away. And everyone else was fine. The rest of the school, very healthy, no issues. The parameters were fine, but it was just that batch. So I think that might have something to do with it. Mm. Time for some water. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's that time. Two heaters in the tub. Yeah. And sometimes you have to. This year I'll be running canister filters on my tubs. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to buy like some cheap pond canisters off eBay. Because I'm definitely not paying $400 for an FX6, which is, I cannot believe they're $400. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. And the FX4 is like 329 It's 350 <laughs> It's 350 That is so stupid. Why did I sell all mine before? Like, I had three of them. <laughs> Why did I just not get rid of them? Three FX4s. I would like to try guppies in our aluminum boat pond. Boat pond? I've always wanted a boat pond. Cool. Like, you can always find, like, holes of boats just on the side of the road around here. And it's like, my, man, I could grab one. I used to pick one of them up and bury it. My mom has a canoe. That These are Borelii, Kenny, if you're still here. She put in her front yard and planted it. So the canoe has plants growing out of it. It looks pretty cool. Like, it was a good idea. This is a, a female Borelii, Kenny. Oh, yeah, that dude right there. There he is. Kenny's still here. <laughs> yeah, it's Borelii. Uh, oh, um... Uh, Blue opal? Yeah, it is. That's a blue opal for sure. They're super pretty. Those. Godzilla vs Kong was visually stunning. Storyline meh. Movie was great though. See, I would rather have a good storyline and like crappy special effects. I get very annoyed if there isn't like solid Avatar story. Avatar was the worst Dude. movie in the world. Dude. Give me my money back for I that. I know. Give me my money back. Yeah. I like when he does that. It makes me feel like I did something. She, she likes when I talk in a deeper voice. <laughs> Don't. I hate it. <laughs> it's Pond so Max makes good canister <laughs> filters. I have one running for three years. It's bulletproof. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Who goes uh, to Godzilla for story? <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> what? You don't you don't Touché. remember that really happened? It's based on a true yeah. story. Based on real events, guys. Big lizard kills things. Perfect. I love a big lizard. Big fan. I don't know. I can't watch movies like that. Uh, the, the animals always get hurt. And by animals, I mean like Kong or Godzilla. I don't like any. Even if they're fictional animals, she can't, I, she can't I do it. I lose it. I cried. I cry. Like, I cry out loud. I don't ever cry. I'm not a crier for, like, stuff like that. But when I see any type of animal, I'm like, it immediately just kills me. It kills me. Like, when they locked King Kong up in, like, the remake from the early 2000s, I, that, I lost it. People in the movie theater were looking at me. Cause I was like, <laughs> like I was so upset and they're like this weirdo, it's your problem. 
It was pretty funny. Cyclist 23, what's up, buddy? Hey. So, so. I heard you need some electric wheel yeah, car I in your life. Yeah, I heard that there may be a need for some EBA, and I have some footage I would like to show you personally to further support this theory. So, I, I think we're coming over at some point in the near future again to eat more of your food. So, just FYI. I don't know when. Like Tremors. Did you see that? What? Literally. Hagen Hill design, Hagen Hill. Hagen, is it Hagen? It's Hagen. Well, what's wrong with Tremors? That's tremors. an excellent storyline. Like Tremors. That's so funny. We just watched Tremors today. <laughs> At like the butt crack of dawn. What time were we watching Tremors? I don't know. Like five. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we were doing, but like <laughs> when you put it on, I was like, all right, that seems right for this time. Mm -hmm. This seems like a good way to go. Oh, oh, Free Willy. I lost it at Free. Oh, my God. I can't. I cannot. Like, I am not able to maintain composure if any animal, be it CGI, puppet, I don't care what it is. Like, I can't handle it. They just don't deserve it, even in fake, fakeness. Jeez you know what? Even the knockoff FX6 now on eBay is $150. Yeah, it's just getting outlandish. It used to be like 79 bucks. It's really ridiculous. The guy that bought mine should feel very lucky. Uh, I will say cheap. the Graboids look very realistic in Tremors. Uh, yeah, oh, for sure. I just said that I'm like, that looks real to me. I would believe that's real. Looks like an and eel not, or not like the whole thing, but no, the tentacles. The, yeah, the... It looks like an eel out of Thailand. Literally, it looks like something that I, you'd see, like they eat in Thailand. Like I've seen stuff like that, so I know there is stuff like that. You've never been to Thailand. <sighs> Don't listen to her. She's never been to Thailand. Google it. Google. Okay, I will Google, did Chelsea go to Thailand? And it'll say no. I bet you it wouldn't say no, actually. What do you want to bet? I I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. What I, I don't know. I don't feel safe. I thought you weren't a gambler. <laughs> I can, I'll gamble with you. You did gamble with me. You <laughs> married me. See, that's why I don't gamble. I gambled once and I won real big, so I got to just leave it alone. Leo, I, I don't know what you're talking about. What other fish? What? He sent me a message. What was the other fish to get again? I don't know. I talked about 800 fish in an hour. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, Kirk said Candy is asking about or how the star grass is doing. It's good. Everything's doing. All the plants are doing really well. Mm -hmm. I was very pleased. The Val specifically. I and to like, be fair, <laughs> I already had star grass, but we needed more, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't even know. Like where's the our bottom? Oh, bottom there is. Long is there full is. Of it. <gasps> I've been propagating what and spreading a it. Flipping turd! My goodness. Hey, still needed more. <laughs> I'm sure some Chelsea has been to Thailand. See. You're right, Keelan. I'm sure. I'm sure. Even Chelsea's that spell it correctly. I'm sure there's one that's gone. Wait, butt blaster. <laughs> I don't know. I saw that. I don't even want to know. <laughs> I don't know what the context is, but that's funny. <laughs> they kind of lost the plot. That is the best thing I've ever heard. They kind of lost the plot after the second Tremors. <laughs> Trickle filters on Timu. But uh, Reba McIntyre's husband finally died in the last one. Oh. So I think they're... I think they killed off Bert. his character, so I think, yeah, Bert. Bert, I think it's done. I don't think there's going to be any more. First of all, I love me some Reba McIntyre. I don't even care how she's delivered. I love Reba McIntyre. I really do. I've always loved Reba. Sid says, trickle filters on Timu. There's a guy in Angfa who swears by them. Well, I, I will never buy anything on Timu. So that I'm is. Not a fan of Timu. That is a security Ooh. nightmare. They have been caught multiple times selling credit card info, yeah, all kinds of it. stuff. So. They message me every single day to sponsor my channel, and I'm just like, no, no, get yeah. a clue, no, I don't care how much money, no. Ramphonic, you don't even need to tell me not to watch where the red fern grows because I flippin' read it. And as I read it in my classroom and I bawled like a little baby because I just couldn't even get, I can't, I don't even want to think about it. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. My dad made me watch Old Yeller when I was like seven. My mom was Pissed. When she found out that he had, she's like, "Do you have you met this kid? Like, do you know who you're dealing with?" I was a mess. I was angry at like seven years old. I was angry at my dad. I was like, "How 
dare he went and got me dairy queen <laughs> right after because he was so he felt so bad what you had some i logged back in to give you crap for the start grass <laughs> i knew it see now we look. said we need we, don't you more plants. i don't like when he wheeze this, and then you said it too we need more plants we, we need, need plants. plants but i didn't whether know whether we have them I or not we had them. whether we have them or not we still need more i needed that jungle vowel like the desert missed the rain mm. i'm so happy to have that it looks so good in that tank she is upset now you're in trouble. Now you're in trouble. I'm not yes, in trouble. Reba is a national treasure. I second that. Yes. Oh, huh. yeah. There is a Chelsea soccer team. They're kind of a big deal. Uh, that's generally where I hear my name said the most is whenever there's soccer on cuz Chelsea. Like you watch soccer. I hate soccer. I hate it. I just I only I like basketball and I like the 49ers. <laughs> so that's it. I don't even like football. I just the 49ers. I was in the Reba McIntyre fan club yes! as a kid because she was my first concert with Brooks and Dunn. <gasps> That's a good concert. And I'm a ginger. Yeah. So, so she's my people. She is. And I got that lady. I just, I love when there's somebody who after all these years hasn't turned out to be a total piece of trash. You know what I mean? Like I'd be real sad. Like Diddy? <laughs> yeah. I'd be real Too sad. Soon. Diddy? Yes, he did. Di <laughs> like, the diddler? <laughs> yes, he did. So uh, yeah, I love Reba. She's but awesome. to be fair, he was a douche from the start. Yeah, so. he was. He was, and there had always been speculation. So yeah, uh, Benji. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeller Lassie, Lassie. I didn't mind because Lassie didn't die, so it was okay that Lassie Timmy fell down the well. That was a big joke in my house because our dog, whenever the dog would go off, my mom was like, "Did Timmy fall down the well again?" Like every single time. It was pretty funny. I'm all about Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed was good. Try being named after the city you live in. Hey. Sydney, I'm assuming, is your name, your full name. That's pretty cool. That's a cool name, though. I like that name. Maybe Ross Baltimore lives in Baltimore. He does. He said that. I know, but like maybe that's his real name. I don't. It's not because remember the on his order. It's not. Well, I wasn't gonna tell people. It wasn't I'm his not real name, telling but, you know, the people what to. his name is. I'm not outing you. All right, don't worry. My first was Brooks and Dunn and Shana. I'm I. I am still waiting on my first. I have. Oh my god! I am right. a concert virgin. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take him. My first was Kenny Loggins. That was my first. Kenny Loggins at Caesar's Everyone Palace. Everyone I want to see Tahoe. is dead, so I don't really I, care. Yeah, there. Except I would go to Creed. I used to go to smaller, like Sacramento had small venues, and they'd have like Cool Keith and like different rap groups that I really liked. So I'd go see that kind of stuff. But like. Kenny Loggins was my first big con I went to a couple in sync concerts, not gonna lie. My mom won tickets on the radio. So it was pretty cool. So I did a couple in sync stints, a few other random things. But I don't really I'm not a big concert goer because I get enraged in large crowds of people like I'll get in a fight so I, I try not to put myself in that position all that often Mike says Bob bought a Madagascar lace plant yes. you ever mess with it we have one we have right them. now I had one for many years and I it, I loved it it's a beautiful plant you just gotta make sure that it's not fully fully all the way in and buried and it you want needs the a crown little, out yeah you need to have a little bit of the top poking out and it should do that just would be fine. the crown I swear. <laughs> you could try to push me away but Oh, he's not get, he's not, he's not like gonna let me do it this time. All right, fine. That hurts my arm. Danger zone. <laughs> Danger zone. <laughs> but all right, folks, that's it. That's we have reached the end of the stream. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. It was a lot of fun. Always fun talking fish. Um, any news for us? We're getting fish from Dan this week. Yep. So eventually we'll have like an unboxing video for that coming out soon. Um, I think there might be a Pleco video coming out soon, which are never very popular, but I love Pleco, so I don't care. Forget it. And what else? Probably a lot more tubbing content coming in the future. Leo is working himself into a ban. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, that's all the news I got for you. I hope you oh, all have that's a, the second one. a great week. And... Um, any final words? Yeah, everybody hates the Cowboys. Go buy fish. Thanks, guys. Have yeah, a good everybody night. Everybody hates the Cowboys. Even the Cowboys yeah. hate the Cowboys. Everybody hates them. Uh, I will. My last words are hmm. Let me think about this. Dak Prescott sucks. Mm. <laughs> Anyways. Make sure you have 72 hours of emergency supplies, <laughs> emergency <laughs> supplies, food, and water. Yeah, that's a good. That's Get on it before and, next week. And on that note. <laughs> We'll Hope see everybody you, survives. Uh, Have we'll a great see you night. on the 8th.
The eighth. <sighs> What's the eighth? Is that next? Oh. <laughs> what that is, is that? Next What's Monday. What's the eighth? Like, who cares next about Monday. that? Come on. All right, everyone. We'll see you later. Have a good Bye. week. Bye. Bye.